Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan. <laughs> this is Felicia. And today we have a very special guest. She is from. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say her like, name. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because... you, you, you go ahead. You go yeah. ahead. Introduce her. <laughs> yeah. Her name is. Alicia, <laughs> I am Felicia, and she's Alicia. You know, when I saw her name, I was like, "Oh, this is her." I gonna know her, yeah. And she's very special. Uh, we know her because of our very dearest sister from Northern California. Yes. Yeah. Her organization is called My Faith Vote, and it's how Christian today we should vote with biblical value and put our value system inside. The ballot box, and this is very important because in order to change what we're having right now, in order to defeat the enemy within the United States, it's put the Bible inside the ballot box. So it's my honor to welcome Mrs. Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Thank you guys for having me here. Can Can you introduce yourself a little bit?、Uh, my name is Alicia, and I am the this year the new state. Uh, California State Coordinator for My Faith Votes. So the Lord has given me a task. I'm a mother of、uh, three boys. I lived here in California, fifty some years.、Um, so I, I love it. I love being here.、Um, God has been working in me for the last four years of my life and bringing me to this place. So I'm excited today to bring the Word of God and also to bring、um, voting. Why we vote and Um, how we need to get involved.、Uh, can you tell us a little bit about My Faith Vote?、Uh, what kind of organization it is, and then what does it do? My Faith Vote,、um, to sum it up, is a pray, think, and take action. And so we want to pray for our country. We want to think about the candidates. We want to research them, and then we want to take action by voting, which is really important. And so we're an organization right now that has a campaign called Right Now. And during the Right Now campaign, you can get involved by writing letters to the swing states to encourage other Christians to vote. Sometimes we just need a little encouragement from our brothers and sisters to get out and vote when we feel like it doesn't matter or there's no hope. God always has hope for us. So we have the Right Now campaign going on. We're also partnering with other organizations in California. We have one called Informed Parents, and it has an opt-out choice for parents at schools. So my faith votes is getting involved nationally in all different organizations and partnerships to strengthen what we do, which is to pray, think about voting, and to take action. Well, you know the writing letters. I see now a lot of Chinese Christians. They are writing letters now, and I see they're like connecting in the group. Say, hey, how many letters I wrote today? And something this is very simple, very easy. Can you introduce how to writing letters and how how can we know other people's like address and what what we write on the letters and what we have to prepare for this? Absolutely. So if you go to my faith votes. And you go to the Right Now dashboard, and that's W R I T E N O W dashboard, and you sign up. You can sign up from anywhere from ten to I don't know thousands of letters if you want, but it's ten, twenty-five, fifty, hundred. And once you sign up for the letters, you'll get a letter back. It's a template for you to use to print out the letters there. Let's say you do ten, you'll get to print out ten letters. You'll get ten addresses. In a swing state that you can mail the letters to. Now the stamps and envelopes and the letter printing is is for the volunteer to take care of.、Um, if they need some assistance, we can try to do that.、Um, but it's an amazing opportunity, and it, it goes it's really easy. I've done it myself,、um, so that I could have the practice with it. So just go onto the dashboard, sign up for as many letters as you'd like. You can throw right now parties. You can call your friends over and say, "Listen, I got a hundred letters to do." Um, and do it with your friends and family. Do it with your church. So really easy to get involved like that. And if not, you can contact me or Minshew or、um, call My Faith Votes, and they'll be happy to help you. Oh, thank you so much because you know that's a very exciting thing when you open your mailbox and you find out someone handwrite 
a letter for you. You know, that's, that, you know, every time you open the mailbox, there's a bunch of like a uh, grocery store, you know, <laughs> or something like that, or DMV asking money from you, or you have to pay for the fee for your house or something, right? They're always asking money from you. But if you open your mailbox one day, you find, oh, some stranger wrote a letter for me. And they're not asking money from me. They're asking to vote according to the biblical value. That's very impressive. Yes. That's and, very impressive. Yeah, and we need to bring the writing tradition back. Right. Have you guys seen like the uh, during the Civil War, uh, when, when the soldiers write to their mom and their family? Their writing is way better than our college students these days. And they're not even high school <laughs> graduates. <laughs> yes, and the Baptist Church, they're yes. writing letter to president. Yeah. <laughs> and president are writing back to them. That's how amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So like when you see receive a writing letter, it, it is going to change something. It's it going to make it a difference. It's definitely going to change something. And uh, some people, they're worried about, oh, my English is not perfect. If I go out to talk to people, I feel kind of like pressure or something. But it's writing a letter. It's writing, right? As long as you can write A, B, C, you can just uh, follow it. Just <laughs> write. You can, like Alicia told us, you can write 10 or 25 or something. You can just uh, send out to people. And it's they're going to be very happy. They're going to be very happy because you are encouraging people to do the right thing. And especially for Christian, right? When we receive the letter, oh, gosh, yeah. they told me to vote according to biblical value yeah. and how warm it is. Yeah, well, we're Californian, save us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Alicia, yeah. So I, I think in nowadays in uh, churches, when people talking about um, government and laws and political, some people say, hey, that's so dirty. That's a dirty game. I don't play with that. I'm not belong to the world. I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm so holy, right? Some people, they're going to have that kind of mindset. So are you always like very passionate about voting, about biblical value? Are you like, when you were like 20, you were like this? Or how, how, how changed you? What's your... Can you tell us your story? It's a mind-blowing story, and I'll try to sum it up very uh, very short. Four years ago, I voted for the first time in my whole entire life. I didn't grow up in a home that had conversations about voting. I didn't talk to people about it. Because I didn't vote, I didn't feel like I had an opinion, so I never talked to anybody about it. So four years ago during COVID, I got a book called The Practical Guide to Culture by John Stone Street. And I began to read it and I began to understand that a lot of my views were the secular world, even though I was a Christian. That was mind blowing to me. Like, how can I believe like the secular world, but I'm saved by Jesus? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And right. so I signed up for a class through Colson Fellows and it's called uh, the Colson Fellows. Well, it's called Colson Fellows. And they actually have a 10 month program for biblical worldview. And I went through it and based on Genesis 128, I voted for the first time because it says we have dominion over everything in this earth. And that means that we are participate in everything in this earth. And I'm going to tell you, God really shook me up because he said, you know, you're a lukewarm Christian. And I said, how could that be? I'm working in the church. I come to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. I do Bible study. Um, I do women's ministry, and he said, Alicia, a lot of my people in the church believe that they are on the narrow road, and they are on the wide road. They don't really understand. And so God turned my world upside down. And so four years ago, so I'm very passionate. I voted for the first time four years ago. Yeah. Is there any people like against you, like, you know, those people attending church? And uh, I, I sometimes I, I feel very sad because people, they, they love God, you know, no question. They love God. They go, they serve people. They go to church. They read Bible. They do Bible study. They serving people, all the things they do. And they think voting is a dirty game to play. And after you turn yourself as a very passionate Christian, care about our neighbors, care about the whole nation neighbors right we love our neighbors and uh is there any person like say why you changed like so much why you are doing this people like turn to against you 
I haven't really been very public lately. Uh, I'm just getting out there and speaking now for my faith both I've been involved with them for several months now. So I really mm-hmm. haven't had those kind of questions to me, not even in the churches. I, I haven't had that experience yet, but I know that a lot of people don't want to talk about it. Um, they just kind of, you know, go about it. Um, we've had a church say, well, we're not political. Well, I'm not political either. I have the biblical worldview that God gave me and I voted mm-hmm. according to that. And so I think there's a difference and we have to kind of wake and shake the church up about that because God holds us accountable for what we do here on earth and voting is important. Our constitution is 34% of the quotes in it are from the Bible. How amazing is that? Yes. How could you say it's not that government isn't um, supposed to be by the people of the church when 34% of it um, comes from the Bible? And so God was speaking to us even back then. So it's very important that we pay attention. And for anyone who wants to take Constitution Alive through Patriot Academy, it's another great way that you can learn more about your government. Yeah, and uh, Ephesians 4.25. Right now, th- th- that's the verse that uh, I'm homeschooling my kids with. It's uh, to tell your neighbors the truth because we belong to each other. Right. That is what Christians are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. We The way we love our neighbor is not, ah, we don't care. Ah, maybe. It's we need to tell them the truth because this is our country. In order to save them, we need to save by voting to change the society. So I think what you're doing is amazing and uh, encourage more Christians to come out and vote. That is what we need. That is what the founder does. That is what uh, John Adams in the constitutional uh, meeting, he was like, oh, this is what God want, uh, want us to do. We need to be righteous. We have a chance to make a Christian nation. And that's how they gather the constitutional um, army to fight off the British. And now is uh, it's a cultural war. It's a biblical war. It's a religious war. So that's when Christians need to get together and tell the truth. Yeah, and Alicia, you just mentioned the Constitution. That's how amazing like our Constitution tightly to our biblical value and to our according to the Bible, right? That's how amazing. Can you imagine that? You know, like people came from the whole world to the United States. Everyone in this world, they know the USA is the best country in this world history. People came here, they won't live here as we do, right? We, we all immigrants, he came from Taiwan, I came from China. We love this place. We came here, but a lot of people, they have no idea why America is so great. Why America is so good? I think that's a question that we, we need to think about. Like, is it Western people smarter than Eastern people? <laughs> Obviously, we all kind of the same, right? Because we all the creation of God. We all have the image of God. So are you guys smarter than us? Well, so what is the reason? So once people really know the root, what cause America is so great, is so strong, that's Jesus, because we have Jesus. We have the constitution based on biblical value. That's how amazing it is. Yeah, I also know you are a uh, pro-lifer, right? I think a Christian, sometimes they all like juggling and say, hey, okay, you let me vote. I don't know how to vote. You know, the Democratic Party, Republican Party, they kind of the same, you know, they're all bad people and play uh, political games. But I think only one thing, Christian, if you don't really know anything else, but only one thing, when you know this, you're going to know who you're going to vote for is life. And I'm pro-life through experience. So I had two abortions. And um, it was, you know, people talk about it as if, you know, it's something that you just get over. I hear a lot of women say it was nothing. Um, But that's not the truth. It's a lifelong healing journey and only God can heal you from it. Because you're basically taking the most amazing gift that God could give a woman is the ability to be the vessel for life. And when you take that from a woman, you take her relationship from God in its deepest form and meaning. And that's what the enemy does, right? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? He takes that one union between a mother and a child and her and God, and he distorts it and, and perverts it. And then you have to live with it. And I think 
a lot of people in my generation, I come from a generation, and I talked about this in the video, a generation that didn't speak, a generation of secrets, a generation that hid things. And now there are women who are walking around who say they're Christians and believe they're Christians, but they don't have the forgiveness of God and don't believe God can forgive them and how sad that is. Um, I have the joy and I have the restoration and God's love that has helped me heal. Um, some things that people don't talk about is the depression afterwards, um, the, the self-loathing, the, uh, the denying yourself a life because you took a life. Um, so people don't talk about those things that happen afterwards, the years that it, it, it just builds up inside of you. And um, I needed Jesus. And I remember when I met him, I was sitting in a church and there was a woman giving a speech about um, how they had a class for healing from abortion. And I kept hearing the words murderer in my ears. And I remember just crying my eyes out because I was convicted and I knew that I knew I had done something that was, you know, against God. But I was a Christian. I was sitting in the, in the pew, you know. And afterwards, a friend came up to me and she said, Alicia, do you want to talk? And I said, I can't. I felt so condemned that I didn't realize that in that moment, there was love and grace from God to heal me. So I stayed years with it. And so it was years before I got healing. But I'll tell you what, the love of God, I, I sleep. I laugh, I live because of his grace, because of his forgiveness and restoration. Um, unless you're a woman who has experienced an abortion, um, it's hard to even understand what we go through. And for the rest of our life, in my video, I talk about, um, it's taken me years to say, I have five children. I have three living sons, and I have two daughters, I believe, in my heart, are daughters in heaven with God. And it's taken me a long time to say that. And for the rest of my life, that's my story. I have five children. And God has forgiven me and restored me. And now I just want other women to know the same. I want you to know that you don't have to, to cry about it on your own. You don't have to be hard on yourself and hurt yourself or deny yourself life. Because God loves you and God forgives you and he wants you. To heal and he's waiting for you so i'm a pro-life deep in my heart because of what i've experienced and that's just a little bit mm -hmm. of some things that i went through uh, having had abortions and it was based upon lies there was no truth in anything i went to planned parenthood there was no truth there it was all lies that's that's an incredible story that i think everyone needs to hear because uh the left has been telling us that this is freedom, and this is uh, this is what you want. Uh, my body, my choice. Like getting rid of a baby, it's just like getting a haircut. It's just like getting a teeth pulled out. It's just like cutting your nails. You know, just throw it away. It's just a clump of sails. But they didn't realize that woman and the baby's connection. It's God's given grace. It's a gift from God. The kid is so precious. Once a woman become a mother, she will truly, truly be really, really, really happy and find satisfaction. And for them to destroy that satisfaction from woman is very immoral. But throughout the decades, the past four decades, five decades, they have been selling women lies. Just think about like the Planned Parenthood. When they go in, they need e escort to block off everyone, like from all the protesters. They call us protesters, but that we're just there to handing out information, telling the woman, you have other options. Give the baby a chance. You can be a strong mother too. Here is how you can get financial help. Here is where you can get a job. Here is where you can... We are just out there to giving out information to let the woman have choices and to let the kids have a chance to live. But Planned Parenthood don't want that. Planned Parenthood want to block out all the choice that the woman could have and then tell the woman, kill the baby is your only option. Kill the baby is only one way to freedom. 
kill the baby so you can be yourself. Kill the baby so you can advance in your career. Kill the baby so you can be happy forever. That is such evil words. What they are doing. I worked in a pregnancy center that was in front of a abortion clinic in, in Las Vegas years ago, and exactly what you're saying is, I wanted to kind of add encouragement to those that are out there standing for God and standing for life. Um, working in the clinic, we saw women's hearts change with ultrasounds. We saw women's hearts change by being ministered to. So no matter what, don't give up on standing on, on in front of Planned Parenthood. Uh, don't stay home and say, no, I'm not making a difference. You are absolutely making a difference. Women, up until the time they have their child, need support, need encouragement, and we need to stay engaged with them. God can and will change the hearts of these women. Babies' lives can be saved, but we have to stay engaged and get more engaged. We have to be willing to do the, not just walk it out, but talk, not just talk it out, but walk it out with them. And we have to be there to support them. So you're absolutely right. Planned Parenthood doesn't want you to get a word in edgewise or to talk to this woman because you can make a difference right there and then. Because most of the time, the women at the clinic did not want to have an abortion. They had them based on their circumstances. And I'm going to say something to the young men out there. Listen, if you would support her, maybe you don't want to marry her. Maybe you can't afford some things. Turn to your family. Turn to your community. Get some help. If you will support her in any way that you can and tell her, let's have that baby, chances are she will keep that baby. So men, there's work for you to do. So we, we really need you to stand up too. We need you to get involved. We need you to show other men and other young men how to stand mm. for life. Yeah, amen, amen. I, I, I just uh, been so touched by, uh, by your story and uh, I'm totally agree with you guys, what you just said. And I just want to encourage other women, if you had abortion experience, don't be shy. Don't be scared to come to the Lord. As Alicia's experience, you can experience God as well. You can experience Jesus as well. There's no salvation. There's no any healing other than Jesus. So I know it's a shame thing. Like everybody, if woman had abortion before, everyone deeply knew that they were killing their baby. Everyone knew. It's not like leftists are saying, oh, they're fine. They're not fine. Just the, no one saying that. They, they don't put it out. No one's saying that, but it's deeply in their heart. Everyone knows that. But if you have this kind of issue, you can contact us. You can contact him. If you are in Southern California, you can contact him. Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. And we all going to give you all the help you need and we will uh, get you to the healing class and you will feel much better. You will receive Jesus as your Lord and he's going to heal you completely and you can have the ability to help other women who was in your situation. Well, what else does uh, my faith uh, vote yeah. do? Like, uh, do you guys go to churches? Yeah, and do give out like receive invitations. If some church, they say, oh, we want to educate our congregation for this voting season, right? And but the pastor don't know how to say that. You know, <laughs> deacons don't know how to say that. But can you guys come to our church and teach us? Yeah, um, we absolutely do. So we would love before the elections, November 5th, uh, we don't have that many Sundays left, but we're willing to come and speak to a church and set up a table uh, so people can find out information. On our website, we have a voter hub. So you can go on there and you can find out if you're registered. And if you're not, you can register. Then we have a link to um, this different state that you're in so that you can find out what exactly are the election, when the ballots go out, when the guide comes out. We have a lot of information on our voter hub. So um, use that. And we'd love to set up a table to talk to people. Um, help them figure out if they're registered or not. Um, we also have prayer guides. We have prayer meetings online on Mondays and Tuesdays. We have Intersect News, so we're we're staying up on what's going on in our country, and um, we talk about it, inform you about the different scenarios that are going on with pro-life, um, with human trafficking, all the different subjects. We're working on more partnerships. Uh, so My Faith Votes is growing, and the Lord has um, found favor with it. And that's the amazing thing. 
So there's a lot of things we do. We have a pro-life information on the website. I'm trying to think of all the things we have. We have a lot of things on there. So um, <laughs> on the website, um, you know, take a look and see. And we're looking forward to growing in California. What I say is we are not one and done. Yeah. California has a long way to go, but God is faithful and God is good. And so after the election, we'll all take a break. But come back in January, we're going to start looking about how my faith votes can get involved in a local level. Right. So we can start moving visions forward. Right. Step by step, part by part. Because God can change California. Maybe California doesn't know that, but God can <laughs> change California. And yes. it's up to us as Christians to do that. And I love what you said earlier about telling people the uh, truth in love. That is so important because I love my sisters and brothers in Christ but I also love those that are lost and I don't want them to miss out on an opportunity of an eternity, right, with the Lord. And so um, we can't let them to continue to be led by evil. We can't continue to allow them to do what they want to do. We have children, we have homes, we have marriages. We have a life that God has given us to protect and to take action for. And so when we talk about people um, why vote? Because it's not a privilege, just a privilege. It's it's a responsibility. It's in the Bible. Genesis 1.28, and I'm sure there are other quotes that people can talk about in the Bible, that God wants us to be involved. We're his ambassadors. He didn't just leave us here to have a good life. He left us here to have authority and dominion over everything in this earth. And we're Amen. to take care of it intended. And he's watching to see how we do that. And for the churches, I pray, I pray, pastors, that you would wake up. I pray that you would follow God. And I pray that you would get your people involved because you're accountable to the chief. And so I pray that we would have a change there. God says we have a harvest before he comes. And the harvest can be this big or it can be this big. He is giving us the opportunity to vote because God has left us here with the responsibility. And how do we vote? Open your Bible. It's clear. It will tell you. God will tell you how to vote. There's no question. So there's no reason you can't vote this year. Yes, amen. Amen to everything you said. And we we had a great time with you, Alicia. And uh, we're very grateful, very honored that we can have you on our show. Yeah, and uh, I completely agree with whatever you, you, you were talking about. Yes. It's exactly the message that we want to give out. Mm -hmm. California is savable. Yes. Everything you see in this election cycle, mm. all the uh, resources and all the Californian Christians have a very strong vision right now because our enemy, it's so obvious. <laughs> our enemy is just right there <laughs> dancing like, ha, kill babies, uh, uh, drugstore. Uh, uh, LGBTQ. Yeah, our <laughs> enemy is so obvious that caused the Christians in California to have such clear visions like that is my enemy right. and I got to work with God. So that's why you see all these organization and all these- uh, Rising up. Yeah, rising up. And now is the time now is the chance we can work with God. We can use our Bible, put our Bible in our life and walk it out and vote it in to the ballot box. So this is an amazing opportunity. I thank God for what you guys are doing. Yes. Educate the churches, educate the people and encourage people to be strong, smart and righteous in the this election cycle. Yes. I am highly recommend go to their website. I'm going to put the website on our screen. Okay, you, you can see, you can see down below. It's an amazing website. You can find uh, tons of information on it. And I also encouraging you, started to writing, you know, letters. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that you always typing on your computer. You haven't like hold a pen for two years, three years, I don't know. About 15. 15. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just started to to writing letters to people. And can, can you feel the worms when people see the letters? You know, this letter is about love, is about faith, it, it's about encouragement. It's not asking money, it's not asking anything from you. That's amazing, how amazing it is. And it's just a cause, a little, 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 little bit. 
Mm. You, you don't change need... the world with Jesus. Now is the time. Now is the time. <laughs> yes. And thank you, Alicia. Welcome. And I just want to leave you guys with this. When I heard something on the radio, so I can't say it word for word verbatim, but here's what the guy said. He <laughs> called up a politician and he said, "Listen, I want to just tell you. First of all, apologize because I haven't been doing my job, so you haven't been able to do your job very well. But that's going to change." Because I'm we the people, and from now on, I'm going to be calling you on a regular basis, and I'm going to be voting on a regular basis, so that you know how I want to vote, what I want you to do, and you can do your job better. So don't worry. From now on, I, your boss, we the people, are going to start telling you what to do with our votes and what we want in our country. And I think that's a powerful thing to remember. God has given us the authority, and He wants us to take that back. And He wants us to be we, the people. Our Constitution was built on the Word of God, and we need to continue to follow through on that. And so faith does work. We are a country that has become hopeless, but the Right Now campaign is a way you can encourage others to let them know that it's not hopeless, that their vote will count and does count, and that God is totally in control. Of all of this, regardless of the outcome, but you do your part and watch God walk it out. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to be on the show and give us education and encourage us. Yeah, and、uh, AI News、uh, viewer, please go on their website. Yes. You want to know how to vote in this election cycle? You want to make a difference in your community? Go to this website. And make a difference in your life, in your family, in the government. Now is the time for you, we the people, to take control. Okay, thank you again,、uh, Alicia, for being on our show, and then、uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.